hey, you, you've been a Muslim this whole time. Remember when, exactly when, uh, what you're talking when about. When Connor was trying to give the whiskey. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I don't drink. Why don't you drink? Uh, you cannot say salam alaikum and congrats about whiskey. I, I went and I visited a masjid. Uh, maybe three times. He's a drunk alcohol guy yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When alcoholic, someone drunk guy talk, nobody cares about him. Oh, Ch right. Yeah, I saw that. Guy, it was Nate. Yeah. The guy out. Oh, yeah. Put him down gently. He <laughs> yeah. took a little nap. I don't know if it was gentle. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was gentle. <laughs> Messengers Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is our religion, Islam, Islam. This is the deen show. Do I love you, Mama? I love all the work that you're doing. When I was ready to talk about it, I would only talk to you. Yes, and I was explaining how much respect I have for the faith of Islam. Welcome to the deen show. The deen show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Kevin Lee in the house. How are you doing, my brother? I'm great. Alhamdulillah. Life is great. We made it happen, huh? Last time over the web. Now we're live here mm -hmm, together mm -hmm. in uh, sunny Tampa. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. I had to drive all the way. I, I love it, though. You're it's a beautiful center you got. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. We got the uh, future Dean Center now. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, as you can see, we've acquired the property and we're getting right to work. And with your du'as and support, we can go ahead and get the Masjid and Mega Dawah Center up, open and running, inshallah. Imagine every person that prays here, gets educated and guided to Islam here. You'll get a part of all those blessings and rewards, inshallah. What are you waiting for, brothers and sisters? You're gonna leave it all behind anyway, so go ahead and invest in your hereafter that's everlasting. Click the link below, donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. And you're one of the first here, coming here to uh, Hopefully you can take a picture in your mind uh, and remember soon when we get it up and running, inshallah. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to visit in about six months when you got it uh, really set up. But yeah. so far, I mean, it's, it's the bones behind the place are, are amazing. You like you know, it? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to come up. So for those that don't know, you're a, you're a UFC fighter. Mm -hmm. You were with the UFC, then you left, you went to EFC, mm -hmm. then you went to another organization, and now you're back with the UFC? No, just straight back to the UFC. Just straight back to the UFC. Yep. So I had one fight with Eagle, and then yeah. now I'm back in the UFC. Yeah. And uh, I'll make my, my reappearance pretty soon. Okay. And you, before that, before coming to the UFC, we did an interview, mm -hmm. and you were sharing, you came out. You're on ESPN, mm -hmm. and you were gladly, confidently letting the world know that you'd accepted submission to the creator, not the creation, Islam. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, which had been a long time coming. It had it, been a bit of a process through that. Um, people didn't even know that, that I was, I had accepted Islam before I even got cut from the UFC. Uh, so part of being cut actually renewed my faith in Islam. Uh, I don't know how much of the story I can, I can kind of kind of share with you, how much of it I can kind of go back and, yes, and tell, yeah. because uh, I haven't really done many interviews or, or come out and, and share the story, but I do feel like it's important for people that may be along a similar path and, and kind of looking for the answers and looking for the, the meanings of life, yeah. right? Um, this which is actually the, the first interview in person that you're talking about this now, mm -hmm. before, in detail. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, so... Uh, one time, one time I had my fight with Charles Oliveira, yeah. right? I feel like that's really the, the, the fight that kind of got this, this, this started. It kind of started a downward spiral. Yeah. Uh, I tore my knee during that fight, um, which I might be a, like a little different than some of the other guests that you had on your show. I, I've seen other guests you've had, uh, and, and they, um, they're a little more pure in their dean. Mm -hmm. But me, I, 
I came from straight sin. Mm -hmm. um, so once I once I, I tore my knee yeah. and I and I had the the surgery, uh, I was introduced to the pain pills. Yeah. And then once you're introduced to the pain pills, then that kind of starts a, a downward downward spiral through different drugs and different things that that seemed like the answer at the time. They seemed like that's what you need in order to to, to feel whole, to feel like yourself. Um, I went through that spiral for about a year, about a year and a half, until my birthday of the next year. Um, and once on my birthday, and, and I really like just spoke with God, and I really prayed, and I really like looked for these answers. Um, I had lost my last fight, so I, I just felt so lost. Like when you lose a fight, especially after you've had so many years of winning, you 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 just feel kind of lost and hopeless. Uh, but I, but I spoke with God, and this is before I even became a Muslim. And just as clear as me and you were talking, I, I felt like God told me, hey, you, you've been a Muslim this whole time. You, you are a Muslim. And I don't necessarily feel like I reverted. I just feel like I, I woke up to the realization that that's what I've been this whole time. Uh, it took a few weeks of me really being introspective and me really kind of clearing my system out of everything, out of the alcohol, out of the marijuana, out of the drugs, out of, out of whatever, to really come to that realization. I, I went and I visited a masjid uh, maybe three times yeah. without even praying. I just kind of sat in the back and, and observed everybody. Uh, and me and you spoke a little off camera before and I, I just felt like a clearing of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't feel anxious at all. Uh, up until then, the only time I didn't feel anxious was during a fight. Yeah. During a fight, I kind of cleared myself. But it, it being in, the, in a mosque, like, I didn't, I, I felt like that's where I was supposed to be. Uh, so I went to the imam's house. I, I took my shahada. And a week later, after doing that, is when I got cut from the UFC, kind of blindsided me it was it was unceremonious nobody kind of saw it coming i didn't see it coming but that kind of that's why i mean it, it kind of restored my faith and in, in okay maybe i am i'm, I'm on the right path yeah and I, I told this to my brother and he's like that that doesn't make any sense like why would why would you converting and then something bad happening to you like mean that you're on the right path it seemed like you're on the wrong path to me but in my heart i knew nobody can really understand the, the conversations that you have with Allah other than you, I think. Um, and when that happened, it kind of renewed my faith. Like, okay, I'm definitely on the right path. Uh, and where it gets interesting, I, I, didn't, I don't tell this to anybody, right? That nobody really knows that, except me and that imam and, and a few people at the mosque, but nobody took pictures, nobody really knew. Um, and my brother Ali called me after I got cut from the UFC, he called me maybe the next day or, or two days, and he's like, oh, it's terrible what they did to you. They cut you, blah, 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 all this. And he's like, I want to bring you into, into Khabib's new organization, which I had no idea that Khabib was even starting an organization. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know I, that, I, that I've converted at this time. And uh, I felt like that was another sign, like Ali was, was a a, 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 a a way for, for Allah to speak to me and kind of give me a little bit of hope and, and, and tell me that I'm not just going to be unemployed, have no money. So one door closed, stuff. but other doors start opening. Exactly. Yeah. And this other door just happens to be through Khabib and, 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 and Ali. And Khabib has no idea that you accepted Islam at this point. No idea. Yeah. No, no. Uh, Ali neither. Um, they don't find so both, out. That's uh, Ali Abdul Aziz right. and Khabib. They have no idea that you became a Muslim Correct. at this point. Okay. Yeah. Um, they don't find out until after I fight for them. Uh, I fought in March. I, I signed with them in November, fought for them in March. And you're not, you weren't like, hey guys, you know what? Uh, I actually accept Islam. There's like, by the way, nothing yet. No, <laughs> so no, I, 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 I'm not the type to yeah. kind of, you know, I'm more of an introverted yeah. person. So I don't, like me, I don't yeah. just, uh, I don't just tell my business like yeah. that <laughs> for no reason. Um, but, you know, he, he's kind of known me through the years, yeah. and I, 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 I've always had respect for Ali. Yeah. Um, and I, I think just as me being who I am, he, he, that's why he did it, without even knowing that, that I had converted at the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. So at what point did they find out? Um, maybe a year and a half later. 
Not, not a year and a half, uh, about a year, uh -huh. about a year later. Was it from the ESPN or was it from you guys talking privately? How did it come out? It was that? maybe two months before I announced it on ESPN. Okay. Uh, I was at the masjid. I had been going on Fridays. Uh, my brother Saeed had, had took me to, to a masjid in, yeah. in Boca. Um, and I took a picture with somebody there, uh, you know, just as a fan kind of coming up and yeah. asking for a picture. He saw that picture. He called me on the phone and was like, you're, you're Muslim? Like, I didn't even, I had no idea. He's like, oh, okay, now I really, now we're really brothers. Now I really can help you. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how he found out. And then I made the announcement on ESPN uh, two what, what, weeks What later. was uh, Habib and uh, Ali's uh, reaction to that? What you... they, they were shocked. Yeah. Um, they were shocked that I, that I was Muslim for that long. Yeah. Um, but super welcoming, mm -hmm. super welcoming, as with, as with most Muslim people. He was, he was super welcoming and, and just kind of happy that I was finally on, on this side of the fence. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, we were talking about earlier how your first exposure to Islam was through the Nation of Islam. Mm. And at that point you were very young. Mm -hmm. And many people confuse Orthodox, real Islam with the Nation of Islam. So you kind of went away. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to have part in taking that. Mm -hmm. But now you got to see people like Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, who are also with the nation. They left the nation and they came to the, the true Islam. And now you are connecting directly with your creator through Islam, the way Jesus did, Moses did, all the prophets, they did Islam. Many mm -hmm. people don't know that. That's just completely submitting your will to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Tell me, um, you said you had such a welcoming experience from the Muslim community. How about other UFC fighters? How about other peers? How mm -hmm. did they mm -hmm. go ahead and react to your decision? Uh, a few guys that I, that I actually fought before. Yeah. Um, which I'm not sure if he's if he's uh, made the announcement yet, so I won't say his name. But yeah. uh, a guy that I fought many years ago, um, and I, and I had beat him, and he he sent me a direct message on on Instagram, and he's like, "Man, that's 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 amazing that you actually converted and." and you're, we're brothers now, oh. um, and you know you 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 kind of you make friends with some of the guys that you fight, but uh, me and him we didn't never see eye to eye, uh, so for him to reach out to me and, and kind of extend his hand was was it was amazing. It was like okay. So this was somebody who's on a different competing team, or mm -hmm. somebody who you wouldn't expect to go ahead and maybe. It was somebody I didn't expect to be Muslim at all. Oh, you didn't, oh so you didn't even I didn't know Muslim. he was Muslim. Oh. I had no idea he was Muslim. Yeah. Um, and, and then he sent me that message, and I was like, oh, okay, wow, that's, uh -huh. yeah. Who was the fighter who just fought? Uh, help me along with these names. Mm -hmm. He's also Brazilian. Was he also Muslim? The yeah, Pierre. Alex Pereira. Yeah. Is that okay. the one you talked? Yes, yes, I think he's Muslim. He's Muslim also. I right? think so, yeah. Yeah. But uh, he's from like a, a tribe in Brazil, in Brazil or something. I don't know. He's scary. He's yeah. scary. So I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't answer him no questions. But after you say, uh, we talked about this. I just will touch upon this uh, because Joe Rogan. Uh, he was also, you know, praising how the UFC, uh, many of the people from Dagestan and this part of the the world, sure. you know, committed discipline, discipline, pray, mm -hmm. fight God. You know what I mean? All these distractions, like you know, drugs, alcohol, late night parties, all that stuff. That's like, it's not happening, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is Islam helping you in this aspect also? Like we yeah. talked about earlier, that it was kind of difficult, the waking up for Fajr mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. but then you have like the Tony Robbins of the world and they've done studies how, you know, getting up at this time will set you straight for the rest of the day, you know, mm -hmm. to be um, productive and whatnot. Are, are you seeing like the wisdom? Are you seeing now Absolutely. with uh, your training also, regimen, mm -hmm. 30 of mine, you know, just getting up at this early stage. And, yeah, the, the discipline day. behind it. Yeah. And then also when I was, when I was kind of taking my introspective time yeah. to, to, to look back on my life uh -huh. the last 30 years, I noticed like when I was those, at those discipline moments, that's when I always had my biggest success. So I, I looked back on my fight uh, with, with Gregor Gillespie yeah. when, when I fought him in, in New York. Uh, when I looked back on that on that camp, I, I noticed how early I was waking up, uh, how I didn't drink alcohol at all before yeah. then, where some fights I, I would, to be honest, I would be drinking through, throughout the camp. Um, even throughout the camp? You'd be even drinking? throughout the camp. And, yeah. and, 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 and that fight in particular, I was on such a mission to, to kind of reestablish myself as a top contender yeah. that, that I was so disciplined and... and that fight was really the first time that I that I prostrated without knowing that that's what I was doing. 
So, so I've got a younger brother, uh -huh. right? Uh, he, he's in prison right now. Um, at the time he was in, he was in the county jail and he was uh, given a plea deal mm -hmm. against some charges that really were kind of trumped up against him that I wanted him to fight against. Yeah. And I remember being in my coach's uh, 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 office when he gave me the call and mm -hmm. he's like, bro, like I'm, I'm just, I'm having a hard time. Like I, I, is, is this getting to be too much? I'm just gonna take the plea deal. And I kept trying to beg him, like, don't do it, don't do it, fight against you, you can win, you don't give up these years of your life. Um, I remember hanging up the phone with him and I literally just dropped to my knees. Mm -hmm. And I like, I, I basically prostrated without, this is way before I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about converting. I, I don't even know what, what Islam is at this point. Like you said, I'm, I'm still thinking it's, it's the nation. It's, it's black supremacy, it's, it's, it's all these things that it means, not the unity and the peace and the, and the love. Yeah. But when I sat there and, and I just had a conversation with God and I, and I just spoke with, with laying down, um, he told me that I needed to fight. And that ended up being one of the best fights of my career. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of reinforced my, my feeling behind, like you said, like the, the discipline and everything that Islam teaches. That's what made that fight so great for me. It, it wasn't necessarily just my ego or that I was bigger or stronger or, or anything like that. It was, it was my discipline towards, towards staying true to myself and, and true to God and, and kind of following that, that, that voice. Uh, and the moments when I, when I didn't follow that voice, the, the, the results weren't nearly as spectacular. But I was surprised when you were saying that even during training camp, you have uh, not just mm -hmm. yourself, but many fighters, they do that, they'll drink. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Were you on the stage? Was that you on the stage when it was Habib and Connor? Were you in the... No, no, I, no, not, no? Not, not, not Do you on remember that? that? I remember when, exactly when, uh, what you're talking when about. When Connor was trying to give the whiskey? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's showing the boss's birthday. I, I, I'm not understanding. Here's a yeah. Actually, just let me give him. It's I'm his birthday. Gonna, I'm gonna go like yeah, showing the boss. Happy birthday, like, showing the boss. I, I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I never drink. I'll tell you, some booze are parties. I never drink. You're mad backwards, boy. I think it's gonna be a long night for him. <laughs> Ah, yes. Oh, Lord, Jamie, that's he tasty. This. He know this. Habib, assalamu alaikum. And uh, Connor, congrats on uh, proper 12. Thank you, sir. Could we uh, get an official prediction on the fight? Uh, you cannot say salam alaikum and congrats about whiskey. He that, brought the whole open bottle uh, on top of the stage. Yeah, yeah. He, was that his? He was trying to promote his whiskey? and. Uh, uh, I think there was a bit of that and there was a bit of he really actually liked to drink. Yeah, he, he, he really did drink. And, and so he so, was, yeah, he's, in, he's about to have the fight of his life and yeah. he's drinking. Yeah, he's drinking. And yeah. what, was he, Habib, what was Habib saying? Like, uh, <laughs> he's a know. drunk alcohol guy yeah. or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he can say whatever he want. When alcoholic, someone drunk guy talk, nobody cares about him. We just leave him alone, ignore him. And when we go to the cage, we will see who's going to talk. Let's talk now. Let's talk. Let's talk now. Let's talk. Yeah, that's it's just the the, the yeah. reality of the situation, especially when you're when you're young and you're kind of going off momentum and and you feel uh, unbeatable, unstoppable, yeah. and like you can do whatever you want. Were you at one point supposed to fight Connor? Uh, at one point, yeah. 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 You think that can ever happen? I think so. I think yeah. it's still uh, I think it's still out there. It just yeah. depends on. There's there's a multitude of factors. I, yeah. I think it's timing more than anything. Is he gonna fight soon at all, Connor? Is he lined up to fight? From, from what I've heard, from yeah. what I've heard, he he'll come back at the end of the year. Uh, I'll come back in July. He'll come you, back. You at guys the end are of in the same, we'll same, same uh, division. From what I'm hearing, that he wants to go to 170. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm permanently at 170 now. Yeah. So. Yeah, that would that would be a great fight one day. Yeah. One day. Connor and uh, Kevin Lee, huh? Yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah. a lot of. It'll, it'll be a different me though. I think yeah. he'll 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 uh, he, he'll get a different version of myself. Uh -huh. 
So uh, th this is um, this is something that's truly um, fascinating. I've interviewed so many different people, and just to see uh, the more clarity of life when when people figure out the purpose of life. You know, now they have structure and discipline, mm. and your family now. How about uh, family? So you had yeah. some people reach out, but how, how's your family taken to you accepting Islam? Um, my mom right away w was overjoyed. She yeah. was, she was, you know, she she's a devout Christian. Yeah. Um, we've spoken many times on on what that means necessarily, uh, but she's been this way for her entire life. Um, but she was just overjoyed that that this brought me closer to God. She, she told me, like, I've just been waiting on something to, to bring you close to God. Uh, and she said, if this is the way, then this is the way. And she's she's 1,000% uh, behind it. Yeah. Um, the, the rest of my family is, too. I, I think they just, they aren't as, as educated on it. Um, and I'm not necessarily the person to, to speak on things that I don't know, right? Yeah. I, I will always speak on my experiences and, and, and what I've seen with my own two eyes. Uh, but I'm not somebody who pretends to know the answers to anything. Yeah. Um, so I, I think some of my family members, it's, it's a little harder for them to come around. But uh, we've kind of always all believed in God. Um, it's just we believed in God without a, a, a structure behind it. Mm. Um, and honestly, Christianity doesn't provide that structure. Wow. Um, we, I've got some people in my family that there, there's a, a Baptist preacher that's in my family um and there's just no structure behind it i don't i don't really think christianity means anything anymore mm -hmm. i think it you, you can pretty much do whatever and and find a verse to 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 justify it yeah um so it, there's no discipline there's no nothing while you're reminding me i just interviewed a, a very nice brother his name is wilfredo he mm -hmm. was with the uh, mlb the um baseball league mm -hmm. okay. and major league baseball league and he was sitting where you are and he was one of the people responsible. He was organizing worldwide pro protests mm. to get uh, Andrew Tate out of jail. Okay. And they just so, ha I believe, oh, this is my opinion, I believe because of his work, I believe that they released Andrew Tate. Wow. He, he was possibly a, a means of that happening because Andrew Tate's court date was coming. The protest was, was coming up, I believe, on the, 20, uh, the 11th. They released him on the 23rd. And so you would think like they're going to get a lot of negative press, you know what I mean? They got worldwide coverage on these protests. So anyways, mm. the reason I bring him up, he was actually talking about exactly what you just said. He was a Christian. He's got Jesus on his um, mm. tattooed. He talks about having the Bible in his back pocket. Mm. And he talks about how there was no structure also, what you're mm. saying. Like the how, how to, you know, worship, how to do right. things properly all of the things laid out like Islam does. So exactly what you're saying, so many Christians, this is just one of them who I was just with recently, mm. who's a Muslim now, and mm. he's saying the exact same thing, we're seeing this. And how, how many now people are listening to you, and they're also out there now, and hopefully God willing, they can go ahead and uh, not just follow how you do the takedowns and how you do a jab or a cross, but they can look into uh, the way of life that's bringing you peace and solace now, and mm -hmm. discipline and everything else, your connection with your creator, Islam. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's incredible, yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I think the the ways of, of Christianity have gotten so skewed and so uh, kind of lost in translation almost mm -hmm. that it's it's easy to kind of get sucked into the, into yeah. evil. And it's easy to kind of get pulled away from it because there's nothing, there's no anchor anchor kind of holding you to it. Uh, I mean, they speak about the prophet Jesus, but they don't really speak about like how he lived and, and, and who he was and what yeah. he did on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, which when I look into it, when I, when I do my research, he lived like a Muslim lives. You know, when you, when you see, obviously you can't see pictures of him, there, there are no, no pictures, but when you see depictions of him, it's, it's always a, a, as a Muslim. Uh, and when you see any of the, the, the writings that he said from his own mouth uh, are some of the same words that, that Muslims say uh, in, in Arabic, it's not even in English yeah. that, that they've translated over and over again. So I think if, uh, if, if Christians kind of stuck to, to the teachings of Jesus, it would lead them to the teachings of Islam as, as, um, ironic as that is. I'm so happy you brought this up because this is, this is something that many, uh, a majority of Christians don't know the love that we have for Jesus, mm. believing that he was a Muslim, mm. translated one who submitted to the will of God. Uh, we believe that he was the Messiah, 
translated to Christ. And I'll ask you some things uh, more on, on Jesus. And, I, and mm -hmm. for the audience to know, obviously you're a new Muslim, you know, taking baby mm -hmm. steps, learning as we go along. So if there's anything that's, um, that's not clear, we can go ahead and you know, iron out through it. But, but that's, uh, there's a whole chapter named after his blessed mother, Maryam, Mary. Mm -hmm. And now Jesus, your relationship to Jesus now, people would think like, oh, he accepted Islam, you know what I mean? He's lost, Jesus went away. How is your relationship with Jesus now, knowing who he really was, what his message was? It's the same message of Islam, calling mm -hmm. people not to worship him, himself, but God. So mm -hmm. when people hear this, when your family member, your mother was a Christian, that mm -hmm. hold on, I, love, I actually love Jesus. It's a tenet of faith to believe and love Jesus as mm -hmm. a messenger, not as a literal son of God or a God. How does this play into it when you share these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, it's funny you say that because me and my mom was just talking about this yeah. a, a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I told her my, it, it actually strengthens your respect for Jesus, that, that he was just a man, just a person. Uh, he didn't create the, the, the heavens and the earth. I mean, look how far these heavens have, have reached. Wow. When you look through a telescope, I mean, you, how can a person in this type of flesh create mm -hmm. something like that? Um, but but it, it strengthens my respect for him because I know the the, the battles that he's gone up against uh, uh, of sin and the fact that he could come out and, and influence so many people throughout history and throughout time and, and for thousands of years. Uh, it, it strengthens your respect for him and, and, and your love for him. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think me being a Muslim changed that at all or changed my views towards Jesus or changed my views towards even really not even change my views towards Christianity. Um, I, I have certain views about things that they allow, but not, not towards the people themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, let's shift now. Um, mm -hmm. Even though they've done studies where when you talk about God, when you talk about these topics, there's what's the God spot. Things light up, you know, you mm. feel the spiritual side come out. This is good, but we'll take a time out from it and we'll go back to also something I love talking about because okay. I've been, I've been uh, training for a long time too. I've yes. been kind of away from everything, you know what really, uh, like most Muslims, when I started to watch some of the, the um, bouts, more was for when I saw my cousin was like, you gotta see this guy, um, this Muslim guy. Mm -hmm. I had no idea, it was Habib. Okay. I didn't care about, you know, much of the fighting and that and whatnot, but when I saw him go ahead and finish his fight, Mm -hmm. and take a time out to be like, it's not me, it's the creator, and he would humble himself, and he made the sajda. I was like, that's what really drew me to, to, to him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I started watching a little bit, and I got more up to the speed and that. Uh, so I want to ask you back on this. Um, there was a fight. Um, what's your uh, opinion now? Uh, you know Hickson Gracie, obviously? Mm -hmm. This was a legend, right? Mm -hmm. Hickson, Hoyce, mm -hmm. that's who uh, I got my blue belt from. Mm -hmm. I also... Um, uh, met, I trained with uh, Kron, he visited our academy mm -hmm. a long time ago. H Hickson's son, he's fighting, I think, tomorrow, isn't he? Yeah, he's coming back, I think, right? You know, he, now, he's now, been I, gone for like three years or Now, something. please forgive me ahead of time, because uh -huh. I know there's some, sometimes there's mm -hmm. like, you mention a name, and this is like, okay, that's my enemy, or here, or whatnot. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, no. Or, or, yeah, there's a competition, so I might say someone that maybe there's a beef, so forgive me, I don't know, different camps and stuff. Sure. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm throwing out some names, I know the people and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. So what do you think now, Kron coming back, he took, he had a, a, a really tough fight when he fought last time. I think mm. it's been four or five years. He's coming back. Who I, did he fight last? I, I kind of... Who did he... F Kron. Kron Gracie. Uh, Cub Swanson. Cub Swanson. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to remember that fight. Um, yeah, I, I know it's been a few years since he, since he Are, came back. Have you... Do you know... So he's part of the Nate Diaz and... Uh, Nick? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, the kind of trains over in California. Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't know that much about him, yeah. to be honest with you. What did you think, speaking of this, what did you think of just recently mm -hmm. you had the uh, fight, was it Nate or Nick? And then he oh, choked, right. yeah, choked, the, guy, was the, choked yeah. the guy out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nate, Nate's claiming self-defense. And I'm going to connect this to Islam. Watch and, me. and I kind of... I can kind of see his argument there, you know, when you, when you see uh, Jake Shields is yeah. the one that I know that, that you, you know, know, Jake, Jake Shields, Shields? A, yeah, Jake Shields is a he, friend of mine. Okay. Um, so he kind of came out in, in yeah. defense of, of Nate. Broke it down. Yeah, I, I can kind of see why. I mean, just because we're, we're, we're professional fighters, he's still a human. Yeah. And he knows 
if a guy lands a punch on you, especially yeah. when you don't expect it, he can knock you out right then and there. Exactly. So you, you have to be able to defend yourself. I mean, one of the first things about martial arts it, it kind of teaches you is you got to respect that man. Even if you don't know him, even if his name isn't as big, even if he, he's never even fought before, uh, I think Nate showed him the proper respect. And if that was, say, if that was Kamaru Usman or if yeah. it was Leon Edwards or, or somebody who poses a real threat to him coming up to him in the same way, I think he would handle it the same way. I, so I, I was thinking I the same thing it. because you have to stay out of, you have your zone, you have your space. Yep. And in self-defense, you know, you can't let somebody come into your area yep. because you're going to get sucker punched, you're going to get hit. So he was putting his hands up, yep. right, blocking, yeah. making sure. And then what happened from there, the camera kind of shifted. You couldn't see, but mm -hmm. you can see he started off with his hands, right? He's, mm -hmm. he's you know. And it's, and it's funny because, you know, one of my first kind of things that, that put me on the map was, yeah. was uh, hitting Michael Chiesa uh -huh. when, when he ran across the stage at me. Uh, and... I had to explain it to Dana, like, why Why would you do that? Because there's a certain zone between it's, me and you, and we know that as men, once you cross that 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 line, and sometimes the, the, the barrier is in, uh, uh, invisible, yeah. you know? So for me and him, it was the halfway point of the stage. Yeah. So once he crosses that halfway point, you're, you're on my, my side, you and, defend and yourself. I, I have the right to defend myself, yeah. uh, which... In Nate's case, yeah, he, he had the right to defend himself. If he's putting his arms up and the guy came within arm re reach and not be friendly about it, yeah. then yeah, you, you're going to get hit. And he helped him out. He put him down gently. He <laughs> yeah. took a little nap. I don't know if it was gentle. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was gentle. <laughs> but yes, yeah, uh, I, I can see him getting away with it a little bit. You yeah. know? I think yeah. he should. Uh, you, he, you, he should be able to defend himself. Yeah. For sure. And there's so well, many people. There's so much stuff going on. What are you going to do? And then the guy probably maybe trying to make a name for himself. He's exactly. in his zone. Exactly. Headbutt. That was one of my famous things before. Yeah. I mean, uh, not famous, but yeah. Well, famous. That's what I, I like to do back in my day on the street. As soon as somebody comes to me and mm -hmm. he's in my space, the first thing, headbutt. Headbutt, That's yeah. Would go, right? yeah. Well, yeah, this is the streets. This, is street. this isn't an MMA yeah. fight, you know? Yeah. Uh, so even, even the, the letting him down gently... I think he did right by dropping him uh -huh. uh, because you, you ha he has to stay on his feet. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a 200-pound man that we're talking about yeah. in dead weight. If he goes down to the ground to let him down gently, you don't know if the guy next to you is coming up and going to sucker, sucker kick you in the head or yeah. something. You know, you, you got you to gotta defend yourself. Was that, were they, was that like a party going on or something? It's like, I, I have no idea. Yeah. I think it was Mardi Gras, so people yeah. just kind of party in the street. Yeah. But, but and then it's, it's a lot going on. It's, yeah. yeah it's, it's, Islam protects you from all this. Mm. Islam safeguards you, helps you to be home at a decent hour. Explain it you, to me. Explain keep, it to because, me. Because, you know, uh, Allah in the Quran says, don't come near zina, right? Mm. So now uh, anything that can lead you into a situation that now, for instance, there's a nightclub. Mm -hmm. Muslim really standing in front of a nightclub, there's alcohol, even sitting at a table where there's alcohol. These are the things that now Allah wants to protect you. Mm -hmm. So now you don't fall into, right? It's not just like when I just quoted this ayah, this, uh, don't come near zina. Zina is fornication, adultery, and that. So that's why it's, it's forbidden to be with the opposite gender, a man to be alone with a woman. There's a saying, a wise man said, leave a man alone, an honest man alone with a uh, a suitcase of money, mm -hmm. money be safe. Leave him alone with a, a good looking uh, woman. We don't know what can happen, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So that's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, has said, when a man is alone with a woman, shaitan is the third. Shaitan is the third. You get it, the devil's the third, because Makes now sense. things can end up happening, right? So you don't even want to be alone with someone who's not your wife or whatnot, because things can transpire, things can happen. You saw with the whole Me Too movement, right? The boss alone with the lady and then all these charges. You're even as a Muslim, you're trying to keep a distance, you know, keep yourself, keep it respectful, keep it. Now, same thing when it comes to other things, you mm. know what I mean? Because you can fall in, temptation can hit, you know, now you end up in the white club. Now you, now, now you end up taking a drink. Now you're off, you know what I mean? Can, can I ask you a question absolutely, about that? If, absolutely. If, if, so is it wrong for you to sit in that nightclub then and not partake? Wouldn't that be kind of a, a, a test against your... your your, your, your faith in a test against your, your discipline? Um, say it again. To be able to sit there in the nightclub, have everybody else around you drink, and you not take a drink. Let me, uh, let me give you an example. Yeah, so we have different stages. People have different stages of discipline, right? But Islam, when it comes, is general rules 
for all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like some people will say, because alcohol is prohibited, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that's well known. So one says, but I can handle it. You know what I mean? Maybe the other one, person, his level is, is different, but mm -hmm. it just takes that one time that you end up drinking too much, and now you end right. up uh, causing an accident, you kill the other person, drunk and drive, and whatnot. No, no I, mean, I mean, for you not to take a drink, yeah. you know what I mean? So, so now, now we go to that. Now, mm -hmm. for, for example, this. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have someone gifted you a, or you bought, you worked so hard to buy a, uh, uh, I didn't even know this car before until I interviewed uh, Andrew Tate, uh, the, the Bugatti. Oh, okay. I didn't sure, even know when sure. I was talking yeah. to him, I was like, what kind of car is yeah, that? Yeah, he says, yeah. the Bugatti. So let's say Bugatti, because mm -hmm. uh, that's like, I think, a $500,000 car. I think it's like a million. Yeah, a mil it's, a it's million. It's over a million. Yeah. Have, so. Mm -hmm. so I asked people, I said, look, you got a Bugatti? Mm -hmm. Would you leave it in the bad neighborhood with the keys open and the windows down? Mm -hmm. Would you, would you, would no, you, no, no, you would do that, not. right? Of course not. So our Iman is more precious. Our faith is more precious. Maybe one time, second time, third time, you know, you're in a club or you're somewhere and you're disciplined, but then that, that it just takes that right honey or whatever you want to call it. It saying. comes and that's it. You lose, now you lose yourself, you know, and, 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 and things spiral out of control. So prevention is better than chasing the cure, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So mm. we know what happens in these places. The angels aren't in these places, so it's the best to avoid. You want to be, it's a different feeling when you're in a masjid, when you're around people who right. are reminding you of it. And you won't find people like Habib or other people disciplined in this area. But, you know, I know, you know, I come from that lifestyle, I know, mm -hmm. and it took me a while mm -hmm. to go ahead and to distance myself, but it, it was different even just being in this atmosphere without being drunk. Yeah, that's, that's you know definitely what I'm saying? true. It, yeah, it's like you're talking true. different language. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely true. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've visited a, a few since my conversion, yeah. and being there stone sober, is it's, it's different. It's, it's boring, to be honest with exactly. you. You don't even want to be there. Maybe you're Imam. Maybe you're just not having the best at that time. And then you're just like, things are going wrong. And everything is set right. The music mm. is starting to have an effect on you. The honey's there. You know, the, the drink is there. And sure. that's all it takes. Like that, Now you lost the car because you left it. You didn't protect your Imam yourself. You're in an atmosphere that's not conducive to your, to your growth and, and your spirituality. Now you just mm. lose yourself. You mm. see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. But, it, but is it not more reward for someone who can avoid... Who, who can have all those temptations put in front of them it, and not indulge. If you're in a situation that you catch yourself, something happens and whatnot, and you push away, mm -hmm. of course you're going to get rewarded. Mm -hmm. Because you know, by, probably right now, if not, you know, when a person does one evil, de a bad deed, mm -hmm. it's counted as one um, against him. But if a person was even, uh, they were thinking about doing it and they restrained, they didn't even do it. They still, they get rewarded for that. Right, right, yeah. right, right. And then the reward is 10 to 700 times um, can be for the good deeds that someone does. Right. And then just to add on top of that, when someone does a sin, mm -hmm. the angel on the right writing holds back from even writing that, mm. giving the time for the person to repent. Look at the mercy. Mm. Allah's not trying to just punish. He's the most loving, merciful. But this is for us to go ahead and to really, you know, reflect. But we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, as Muslims, we live in between fear and hope. We don't mm. want to play, you know what I mean? It's not about love, love, love. There's the hellfire also, it's real, you know mm. what I mean? We don't want to die. Imagine dying in a place like that. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? I see what you, you mean. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't yeah, want it, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. risk, that you know? Be, yeah. The, 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 the harms outweigh, you know, the, be the harms outweigh the, any kind of benefits. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. And, and again, yeah, you know, sense. step by step, a lot of times it took me a while also. It took me, I, I was, uh, I had a part, uh, you know, promoting a whole different world there. I know it took me a while to, mm. to, to, to adjust. I, I feel the, the hard part is other people and other people that you may love, you know, yeah. whether it be your brothers, yeah. whether it be, you know, even like my wife, she's not necessarily a Muslim. Yeah, I know. So it's the, the, that becomes the hard part of it. I, I understand, yeah, it's challenges of uh, coming up, um, but... Um, Tell me um, when you, are, are these some of the things like I was asking you off camera, like now, are you starting to see in one aspect the wisdom behind some of the injunctions, you know, some of the things, because there's a direct uh, verse where Allah is talking about, there might be some things that you dislike, but it's good for you. And there might be some things that you dislike, but it's bad for you. You don't know. Allah knows. You know mm. what I mean? So have mm. you seen that in your life where there's some things that, you, you know, you had to give up or anything. And then later down the line, now you're seeing like, okay, I see the wisdom. Behind yes, that. yes, yeah, yeah. And, and I've actually made dua a few times to, to give me that wisdom yeah. beforehand. But I don't feel like that's how it always comes out. Yeah. So, sometimes it's, it's after, you know, after you've done something. And then six months or two a year later, then, then you'll kind of see the consequences of it, whether yeah. it be good or bad. Uh, and that's why I just kind of always try and stay on this path now. Yeah. Because I, I, I just feel 
if you're if you're on the right path, if you're on the path of Islam, then then the consequences will be good. Um, because you don't necessarily we I don't think us as humans have that 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 wisdom. You know, like you said, only Allah knows the the entire plan. We kind of see bits and pieces of it. You know, I can kind of see what's yeah. right in front of me. I can I can see the experience that I've gone through or what I've had now, but I can't see the experience of my future. So I, I just have to to pray and stay steadfast that all my decisions will be the right one to lead me to the right path. When you were going through those challenges, you were talking about, and that's that's a huge epidemic of the, uh, the painkillers, opioids, all of this stuff mm -hmm. that's happening. You know, and then that that sets things uh, people up for other drugs. Mm -hmm. You know that. So you experience that. Now imagine how would that be if you're still hanging. You want to help people out of that, but mm -hmm. if you're if the person doesn't want to help themselves, if you're constantly around the group of people who are just you know uh, entertaining these things and they just use it casually, that's mm -hmm. gonna that's gonna eventually. Uh, yeah, that's th th those are. It's a bigger problem than I was even expecting. You know, yeah. I kind of always I kind of always knew it was a problem, right? Yeah. As growing up, you kind of you just. I know I've seen my uncles, I've seen other people yeah. kind of go through it and I just knew to stay away from it. But I didn't realize how powerful it was until you you're, you're kind of forced to take it. Yeah. You know, when you when you have a major surgery and then uh, it was Percocets first that yeah. they gave me. And before my experience with painkillers was like an ibuprofen where you don't really feel anything. Yeah. You know, you, you take it and it's OK, I don't even remember. But you take the uh, a certain type of painkiller and you like. Oh no! This this it changes your your entire uh, experience of the world, even um, where it makes you feel like okay, this is good. Like I, it, it it's such a tricky, it's such a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it can just blind you to yeah. to the reality of the situation until it gets too far out of your grasp. Yeah. Um, which is what I feel like it did for me. Uh, inshallah, it didn't lead me too far yeah. before I was able to catch a grip on myself. Um, which luckily I had fighting that kind of that kind of did that for me. Mm -hmm. If I didn't take a, a fight in in August, my, my last UFC fight, if I didn't take that fight, I wouldn't have made these realizations. Mm -hmm. But me taking that fight and being on the the, the painkillers and being on the stimulants at the same time. Um, of the fight doesn't lie to you. Yeah. I, 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 I'm in love with fighting because it's it's yeah. like the purest form of your expression that you can have, mm -hmm. uh, and it, and it doesn't lie to you. And I, and I think sometimes even if you're a smart person, you can kind of make up stories and you can kind of do things in your own head. Um, but at the end of the day, the reality of the fight will always kind of bring it to you. So me going through that fight made me realize like all oh, these drugs are are really sending me down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. It's not getting me to, to where I need to be. Wow. And was it was it really hard? Did you have to go through uh, how, how much of a detox or how much, yeah. how, time, how much time did it take to get off of this? It, it took me about four weeks. Yeah. Um, starting from my birthday, which was the uh, beginning of September yeah. until like the end of October, or yeah. middle of October uh -huh. when, it, when I made uh, Shahada. Um, yeah, about, about four weeks. You just said something here. Uh, maybe some people, maybe uh, Dana White's tuning in or uh, some other um, UFC fighter or somebody, and you said Shahada. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go ahead and just um, remove the mystery from it. So when s there's five pillars in Islam. One of them is to uh, go ahead and when someone professes this, mm -hmm. uh, they say the Shahada, the testimony, that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and earth, in Arabic Allah, Aramaic, Coincidentally, mm -hmm. it's Allah. Ha. Jesus spoke Aramaic, so he would say Allah also, Allah. Ha. Mm -hmm. And that Muhammad is the messenger, final messenger, and this would include all the preceding messengers, Jesus, Moses, all the ones that came before. So mm -hmm. that's something that you said to uh, come into uh, Islam. Mm -hmm. What was it uh, when, you, when you accepted uh, Islam, when you took your shahada, what was that feeling like? What was it that finally did it for you that you were just like, you know what, uh, I'm going to, because it's, I've been in situations where you can, it's such a blessing. It's, it's something that uh, Allah opens your heart to because someone can be shown all the proofs and evidences and Islam has so much of it, but still, it's it just not meant to be. Something Allah didn't open their heart. But what was it that finally clicked with you that you just, you were like, I'm ready. I, 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 wanted, I need to do this. Was there one thing or just? 
I, I think it was my experience inside the masjid. Yeah. I think it was my experience of, of, of sitting in, in the masjid and, and not even taking, you know, I, I wasn't uh, praying or I didn't actually come into it, but, but it was my experience of seeing the people through it. Yeah. Um, it was that. And then, like I said, me, me being fired from the UFC after that, that's, that kind of really renewed my faith yeah. and it made me pray even more. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's the, the, that, that's the point where I was like, okay, this is the path for me. When I, when I walked in and I didn't feel like anxious, I didn't feel like, oh, I want to get out of here. Like, yeah. oh, I want to, you know, throughout my whole life, that's kind of how I had been just kind of going through life. Uh, but without that, I knew I was on the right did, path. Did you see any statues, idols, icons no. when you want? No, huh? nothing like that. No, no, no just, just kind of bare minimum stuff. Which for me it was like, you know, when you when you come from Detroit, it's the flash, it's the bling, it's yeah. the everything that kind of attracts people, right? Yeah. But uh, I'm like, how can all these people? And it's it's about a good two, three hundred people. I'm like, how can all these people be so happy and, and kind of peaceful, yeah. and 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 being bare, you know, bare stuff? Is like you said, there was no giant statue, there was no, you know, there was no gold medals or anything sitting uh -huh. up on it and people still they came there religiously has anybody like discreetly or have you sent somebody who uh, because as, as human beings I mean mo most people have a void they, they they're, they're searching but they're kind of like lost you know they don't have direction has anybody kind of hinted to you or anybody that you actually yourself invited say come with me come to Juma come to the mosque come you know see uh, they're seeing this peace with you they're seeing you know this you now taking a new turn in life and they mm. want some of that um there hasn't been anybody yet yeah uh are you open to in, that inshallah so, yeah absolutely if someone absolutely. one of your peers someone you train with and say man i, I want to visit the mosque with you are they, absolutely are they welcome to come with you yeah in, in, inshallah one day someone someone yeah. will but yeah. i i haven't uh had that experience yet i think that'll be the next yeah kind of transformative phase is to is to um, allow somebody else to experience yeah. it and kind of almost experience it again through their eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I look forward to teaching my son. And yeah. I look forward to teaching some of my family. Uh -huh. But um, I, I haven't felt yeah. that yet. Misconceptions. There's a lot of them, a ton yes. of them. There's been so many uh, books written, people who opponents of Islam. You know, it's become a big business bashing Islam. Mm. So how is that? Has anything uh, affected you in this way? So I'm, I'm kind of a skeptic, right? Yeah. I'm kind of, I, I, I see something and automatically my, my first thing, I've always been one to go against the grain. Yeah. So I feel like if everybody's going this way, I'm going to try and go this way. Um, and e even with Islam, right? There, there's two billion people that, that on this planet right now that, that, are, uh, that are Muslims. And, and part of me towards it is like, okay, there has to be, there's got to be something here that, that I can kind of go against. Yeah. So when I'm reading the Quran and I'm reading everything and, and even things that I'm hearing, I'm seeing videos, I'm seeing all this stuff. There was nothing that I could point to, to say, no, that's, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. There, there was nothing that I could ever point to that, that I could refute or that I could kind of go against or that I could logic my way out of. Yeah. Um, that I found in a lot of other religions. The, this one, I just, I, and I, I couldn't, and, and I didn't, I, I don't say that to please other Muslims. I don't say that to please other people. I, I, I just say that because that, that's been my experience and, and that's what, really just to please God and really just to please Allah. Like, mm. that's just the truth of the matter. I can't, I, at least in, in myself, when I, when I read the book and I, and I hear and I listen to the book, I can't understand Ar uh, Arabic, obviously, yeah. um, but I, I can't find anything in any English translation that I can refute. Mm -hmm. I try. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen somebody else do it either. Yeah. I've tried to look up skeptics of it. Uh -huh. I can't find it. Wow. Uh, let's shift a little bit. Uh, we, we were talking about nutrition. Mm. You know, now you're coming up in weight, mm -hmm. and how long have you been taking nutrition serious? Like, what do you like to eat in the morning, and do you just eat anything just to bulk up? Or Because I was, like I told you earlier, I, th I thought you were much smaller, man. You're just, like, <laughs> you're pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's been about, really, since, since I had left the UFC and yeah. when I started bulking up even more. Yeah. Um, and through my knee surgeries and stuff like that, I, I kind of had to take nutrition super serious. Yeah. 
Um, I, I, I do and I don't. I allow myself some, some breathing room. Yeah. I, I do allow myself some time to relax because sometimes I feel like you, you can almost take it a little too, mm-hmm. too serious, if that yeah. makes sense, and, and you can kind of stress yourself out about certain things. Um, but I, I make sure everything that I eat is, is whole, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like, yeah. like a, n- nothing processed, really. Yes, okay. Um, whole foods. And, and really, I've been training and I've been fighting for so long. I, I've been fighting for 12 years now. So I kind of have been through many different weight cuts and, and many different diets where I, I understand my body. Um, I don't really listen to many other people on their um, recommendations for food because yeah. we're in a different body. Um, some things I've experimented with in, in terms of food and, and knowing what agrees with me and what doesn't. Yeah. And I feel like I've found a, a good balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't, I, I kind of refrain myself from giving other people advice on it because I could tell you something that works for me that doesn't work for you at all. Yeah. O- only thing I could say is just, to find a, a good balance in mm-hmm. things. And uh, whole foods, whole foods always. That, yeah, that, that part I can't dispute. Yeah, I learned this term from my nutritionist, uh, eat real food, avoid, this is like just the white belt level, real basic, mm-hmm. and I stick by that myself. Eat mm-hmm. real food, avoid fake food. Mm-hmm. Fake food is anything that comes with a list of ingredients that you need a chemistry biology degree to yep. pronounce. So I, yep. I stay away from that and I've seen a big Yeah, difference. I mean, th- this body has been around for hundreds of thousands of years, yeah. right? before people were able to, to create these foods in labs. And um, I, I think the, the, the most blessed people were eating simple things. Mm-hmm. I, I think simple is, is always better than, yeah. than the convoluted. How was uh, eggs, eggs, steak, yeah. Uh, yeah. sweet potatoes, mm-hmm. avocados? Mm-hmm. Do you feel um, good with your body? Uh, avocados, I don't really. Not really. Yeah, no. not, not avocados for me. Liver? but. <laughs> you know, I, I've been onto the organ meats lately. Organ meats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Liver, uh, uh, you kidney, little, but, heart. But you, I, seem I'm little, kinda... you seem like a little shy to. to, to yeah, uh, yeah, talk. because. But because these are the most healthiest foods. It is, it yeah. is. But but for some people, it's kind of like, like they immediately yeah. get. It's a visceral type of reaction. Yeah. But It's the most um, nutritious food. It is. And, and you know. <laughs> One of the things Detroit is known for is is a chili, right? Yeah. Detroit chili, yeah. uh, Coney dogs, chili uh-huh. dogs, stuff like that. Um, I, I found out in college that that the secret ingredient to the chili is beef heart. Mm. It's it's actually a mixture of beef heart and, and ground beef, which I never really knew. Uh, but my mom said that that was one of the things that she ate when yeah. I was uh, when she was pregnant with me. Yeah. She ate a lot of chili fries and a lot of. Uh, and apparently there's a lot of beef heart in there. It's oh. visceral, you know, kind of uh, the organs of the, of the animal. Which organ meats do you particularly like most? Uh, k- kidney's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, How about liver? I- I've had duck liver a few times. Duck liver? Duck, duck liver's great. Yeah. yeah, duck liver tastes great. L- um, liver, they say, is the most nutritiously, nutritiously dense food. Like if you want the most bang for your buck. Yeah. Yeah, I feel liver. like you got to cook it right, though. Yeah. You know, some people make raw? livers and onions and them. What, what about raw? Yeah, I never tried that. Never tried raw? No, you have? Yeah. You tried raw liver? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, some raw <laughs> liver with my brother. Help Bismillah. Out. Let's Bismillah. go. Bismillah. Does the body good. Alhamdulillah. It's not bad, huh? Well, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Cow's liver? Uh, co- uh, mainly uh, lamb. Wow. Or cow also, yeah, cow, yeah. Wow, okay, you're a braver yeah. man than me. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's, it's a mindset. If you know, like, you're um, taught, I mean, if you're persuaded, the evidence is there that, mm-hmm. um, okay, this is the most bang for your buck, and you're not just um, going to eat something that's going to excite your taste buds. You're doing mm-hmm. it because, not because, like, a lot of times you're programmed, you know, because of all the foods we eat, convenient, junk food, fake food. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, you know, you're told, like, this is actually good for your body. It's, good, it's nourishing your body. It's proper. I'm in. Mm. You know, if it's good for me, I'm in. I'm going to do my you best know, the, to try to program myself to eat that. When you said sheep and lamb liver, uh-huh. I, could, I could see that more. Yeah. Because it's probably less processed and yeah. stuff. But, but cow liver, I'm not, I'm not too sure about if it's humanely raised animal, humanely, yes, 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 not the pro- halal, yeah, yeah. Right. So no, yeah. exactly. I like what you said. Okay. Not from conventional. No okay. way. No. All right. No, I would, All right. Yeah. No. Okay. I just want to make. Yeah. No. I just want to be clear about. Yeah. That. Okay. Hopefully, when you you come up down, um, I have we have a 
some some land and we got some uh, sheep and goats. So oh. usually, have have you ever done it yourself, slaughter animal prepared? No. Okay. No. That's Never. Another step. Yeah. You you uh, oh, yeah. yeah yeah. You'll yeah. take me. Oh yeah. All right, let's oh, go. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Absolutely. I'm excited yeah. for that now. Habib, I got the sheep ready. I got them ready to go. So, th so this is this is what I love. So we're talking about the spirit, the soul, the heart. Many people neglect this, and mm -hmm. they go down the road of alcohol, drugs, and filling, trying to fill that void. Mm -hmm. You know, of all of these things that just keep you empty. Don't ha have you feel? Did you feel some kind of? Did you feel some kind of void? Comparing, making a contrast to yep. before. Was there? Was that that void? How did that feel? And now, what do you feel compared to back then? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm only 30, right? Yeah. But I feel like I've lived for a long time. And the first majority of my life was kind of chasing money, power, respect, yeah. you know? Those are the things that, that I was after growing up. Like, that's all I really was focused on. Get more money, get more power, and then people will respect you. Um, and coming up through fighting, I kind of got those. But it didn't. It didn't do anything for me. It didn't. It didn't satisfy the the. Uh, the more I got, the more the hunger kind of came out, um, which can be demoralizing a yeah. little bit. It can be kind of depressing yeah. when you you're like, man, I, I got everything that I that I dreamed of. Like I got the big contracts. I got the house. Like my mom's okay. All right, I did all that. All the stuff that I thought was gonna f fill me up, now now I just want a bigger house. Now I just want yeah. the I, I just want more of it, um, and it can just lead you on, on this this just dark path, like you said, the the sex, the money, the drugs, the all that like dark hole, yeah. But 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 when you get on the 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 right path, which honestly is a lot of tests through it, even. You know, like I said, I, I, I got cut from the UFC right after that. So it's a lot of uncertainty through that. Yeah. Um, I feel like I was almost stripped away of, of all those things. You know, people start respecting me less. People start, you know, I, I didn't have as much power. Mm -hmm. Didn't have the, as much money, all that. But I feel like God took those things away from me so that I could really feel love. I could really feel compassion, unity, mm -hmm. I can really feel a sense of duty, mm -hmm. which, which is a lot bigger than chasing money and power and, mm -hmm. and, and, and women, you know? Yeah. Uh, a, a sense of duty, for one, that, that every move that I make, every word that I speak, everything that I do is, is in the words of Allah and, and it's following that path, that gives me a lot more uh, feeling of... of fulfillment than, mm. than any type of money or any amount of money could ever give me. So yeah, it, it, it's given me a lot more substantial. Did it, uh, the miracle of life, did that, did that have an impact on you? Uh, many don't know, you just had a son. Yeah, right? he's five months. Five months. Uh, not too long ago, he didn't exist. Mm. It was, but now he's here. Mm. Where did he come from, right? Oh uh, uh, yeah, right? yeah, and it's, glow, it's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I'm kind of, you know, I want to get back to him right now. Yeah. It's it's the best thing in the world. It's it's so amazing. I wish somebody, you know, people always scared me into having kids for some reason. Um, if if I can give a message to anybody is have some kids, especially when you're young, man. Have some have some kids. It's it's so. I, I feel if if I would have had him, may, may, I wasn't the man yet. I wasn't I wasn't ready yet, but. I kind of, yeah, I wish I had him younger even. Mm -hmm. I would have been. Helps a man also uh, mature, mm -hmm. not, not just living for yourself now, mm -hmm. responsibility and helps you, you know, the completion of mm -hmm. you, completing you in a way. Yeah, and it gives you just another sense of duty, you another know, I think, duty, I, think yeah. that's, I think that's what a lot of men are, are missing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where our, our world is kind of going wrong a little bit, yeah. is, it, is they're taking that duty away from the man. Um, and you just feel so empty without that. You, mm -hmm. you, I, th I truly think that you need it. Um, and kids is just a built-in way to, to have it. You know, my, my son, he needs to eat. Mm -hmm. He needs it. I'm the one that, that, that has to provide it from him.
mm-hmm. for him. So just that alone, if he's eating, the the rest of life is taken care of. What else yeah. am I, do I have to worry about? I don't have, I don't care about anything else, other than him being taken care of. Yeah. Uh, it, it's that, that's the part that people don't tell you about having kids. Yeah. I, I wish someone did. Yeah. Uh, a few more minutes before we come to an end. Uh, just your your opinion on, and, and I know this can be a little bit controversial for some people, but you see it over over the news. You see men, because you're a professional athlete, so this kind of goes with it. You see some men who identify as something else, and they're competing in sports for women, mm. and they're winning, right? And it seems like uh, this is taken away from, from the women who are yeah. going into these sports, and now they're being de- deprived because a man is coming in. Yeah. But he's not a man, so it's confusing yeah. now, and he's winning the triathlon, the swimming competitions. Yeah. Have you heard about these things? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course well, I have. You don't have to talk about it if you don't even want Even in MMA. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can. Um, yeah. There there's certain parts of it that you do kind of, you, you get nervous to talk about it, right? Yeah. Because there's mobs of people. But, but it doesn't seem like you're you're that type to like. You know. I, I, yeah, I don't really oh, care too good. much about social media or anything like cool, that. I, cool. I care more what what about speaking you know, the truth. And, and and for other people too, you yeah. know, I want to see other people do good. I want to see yeah. other people. I want to see society thrive. Yes, yes, and, that's and, what about. And, and this path that that they're trying to go down of a man can be a woman, and and you can you can kind of give into these delusions, and you can you can supplement these these mental illnesses i mean that's let, let's be honest that's what it is even if you ask the person themselves they'll tell you i'm i'm mentally ill something's wrong with me mm-hmm. um why do we these days buy into that why do we say that that's good why are we teaching children this why are we sexualizing children that's the that's the craziest thing in the world. Why is that okay? Why does anybody that's, that's an able-bodied adult feel like it's okay to talk about a child's s- sexual orientation, sexual anything? Why is sex and children in the same sentence? Mm. It's so mind-boggling to me that, that more people don't say how wrong this is. And so many people attack people who, who come out against it. It's pure evil. If, if sexualizing children isn't evil, then I, then I don't know what is. I mean, it's the purest evil that I, that I can think of. Um, and allowing people to, to, to do this and allowing people to, to maim children and, and, and give in to this stuff is, is just, it's just wrong. It's just flat out wrong. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, and, and a lot of what we've been talking about is, is Islam and you know, things being allowed and not allowed. And if we truly believe this is the word of God and we know that this is the word of God, why would you not listen to what God is telling you? Mm-hmm. you you're you're going to hear him and then look the other way and say, OK, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. It's the most insane thing in, in the world to me. And, and I don't think Earth has a big enough punishment for people that that decide to do that. Yeah, and I think uh, many people, when they see the, the mob attacking a small group, attacking people who come out to say, look, leave our children alone. Do your thing in your bedroom. Keep that over there to right. yourself, but leave our children alone. Right, which should be obvious, Respected but him. apparently it's not. Yeah. Apparently it's not. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that should be the most basic, obvious thing. You, you have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to defend the people that you love, especially defenseless people. Yeah. Speaking about children, they're defenseless. They don't, they don't know anything. They only know what we tell them. And if we tell them right out the bat that it's okay if you want to be a little girl. If, you, if you're a boy, it's okay. it's okay. All right. Yeah, sure. If you, it's, it's, it's so crazy. And, and even when you hear the, the arguments of, oh, gender is a, is a social construct. Mm-hmm. Many things are a social construct. We still abide by them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this building that we're sitting in at one point was a social construct. We're still here. Why is that an argument? I, I don't understand. If gender is a social construct, it okay, it's true. All right. I, I don't understand any of the arguments mm-hmm. for this type of uh, dysphoria that a lot of people experience. Mm-hmm. 
And it's nice, it's, it's refreshing when you, when you have, and like we start out talking about Islam, you know, or even the Bible makes this clear, you know, the Quran makes this clear, how God Almighty Allah created us, the man and the woman. The man is not like the woman, you know, these mm -hmm. are, this is something that is from the beginning of time, mm -hmm. right? So people in position like yours and others, you know, you can be the person who even has strong feelings against this, but if you're silent, then mm -hmm. what happens, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. voices of that minority become the majority. And next thing you know, mm -hmm. the kids are getting sexualized, right? Nobody stood up to defend the little ones. You know, which I, which I feel like is what we've done in the last couple of years. Uh, the, the, the strong men who really kind of know right from wrong and, and know their own experience and are, and are true to it, we've kind of stayed quiet. Um, and kind of let, that, the, huh? yeah. let the monkeys run the zoo. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. been, it's been a lot of that. Nobody's really, I'm not gonna say nobody's had the balls to stand up yeah. for it, but. You see Piers Morgan talking a little, I don't know if you know Piers mm -hmm. Morgan. Mm -hmm. he He's the British, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. He's talking up and you can see him, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, there, there, there's a few people and I, and I feel like now we're, we're finally starting to, to stand up for it Push because back, yeah. we're, we're, we're just starting to see it's, you, if you let people do to their own devices, uh, someone who is evil, who will kind of take advantage of people, uh, will do that. Mm -hmm. And we, we have a duty not to let that happen yeah. um, and not just get devolved into our own world, which I feel like a lot of, a lot of men are, are doing right now, at least strong men. You know, we kind of, you know, you, you can be the, the kingdom of your, own, of your own forces around you. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of get sucked into that and forget about the greater overall purpose of society. Mm -hmm. which uh, for me, I want to see society thrive mm -hmm. for many, many generations and not just in the next couple of years. Do you feel that's also part of uh, being, being a man, being someone who's courageous, not just being courageous to fight in, because it takes a lot of courage to fight in this cage, but to go ahead and speak the truth mm. against... That's rights. actually harder, to be honest with you. Ah. It's harder because, because sometimes you don't know if you're... <laughs> if, if how you're feeling now is going to change in the future. Um, like I said, fighting is, it, it is what it is. It's a, it's a moment, it's a snapshot of time. But I think one thing that, that the internet is kind of teaching us is, is some of this stuff is going to live forever. So it's, it's kind of, you, ha you have to make sure you're on the right path before you say something, because in, in the next few years, things could be different mm -hmm. and it could change. So I, I think it's actually more courageous when people stand up and they, and they speak, it's, it's more courageous to do that than, than to step in a cage and fight. And this is why one of the reasons we do the, the Dean Show, because it's out of the love. Uh, we go ahead and share this message. And people who are even going down these paths, I, I truly believe, is because they don't have the guidance of the Creator. And that, that door is open for them too, for everybody, you know, because God for Almighty everybody. Allah is the Al Wadud, He's the most loving, the most merciful. So uh, if you want to live a good, wholesome, pure life, uh, You'll come to uh, the way of life that was revealed by the Creator of the heavens and earth, the way of life that you're upon, mm. and that's bringing you that solace and peace. And inshallah, it continues to. You keep living it, and you can be a good inspiration and motivation uh, for others. And what, uh, with closing now, what advice would you give for maybe uh, a person who is going down the straight, the, the path also? Maybe they lost the fight, uh, they lost the battle, whatever, and now mm. they're also taking some of these uh, pills and. They may be even contemplating taking their life, whatever the case, and they're just tuning in now, and they're listening to you, you know. And then they're they they've been hearing the term Islam and whatnot, and you're they're, they're a fan of yours, mm. uh, and and they're they want to hear what advice would you give them? The only advice I can give is just not to give up. Not to give up. To, to keep pushing. Keep, keep pushing. pushing. Don't don't give up. Uh, Eventually, Allah will, will come to you mm -hmm. in, in whatever shape or form that that is. Just don't give up. Don't, don't lose yourself. Don't, don't, don't think just because you are this way today that you're going to be this way forever. Uh, I think you never know what's going to happen. You, you can't give up. You, you keep going. Even if you gave up yesterday, keep going today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Just don't, don't give up. You ne we never really know what this world is going to gonna mm -hmm. gonna end for us but we know if we if we can stay on the right path that that eventually Allah's love will will be there in the end mm -hmm. beautiful any other closing comments anything where people can look you up no not really no yeah. just get ready for my fight in uh in July and I think I, I kind of will let the the fight 
be a be a representation of of who I am at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why that's a lot of the reasons why I've stayed shy off of saying too much. Yeah. I, I, I want to show everything through actions, yeah. and then I'll be able to speak. May Allah, uh, God Almighty, bless you. And inshallah, and look at me you as your, too, your, your uh, look at me as your older brother. I'm here for you to help you along your journey. Anything you need, uh, I'm a phone call away. Thank you. And when we get yeah. down here permanently, we're not too far away either. So inshallah, look forward to having you here back when we yeah. finish up everything. Yeah, I got to come back in like yeah. six months once this place is. It's gonna be beautiful. This right. is gonna be a nice, nice spot that you guys set up here. Yes, yeah. the Dean Center. Just like You're a head. blessing. Alhamdulillah, you too. Thank you so much, my brother. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.